Hello, Mark Lloyd, Lead One Home Loans. It's going to be a three-part series on income-based repayment, qualifying for mortgage income-based repayment, or IBR, student loans. When you have student loans, qualifying for a mortgage can get tricky. In this video, I will go over the following topics. Understanding IBR, student loan payment changes, calculating your debt-to-income ratio, student loan guideline, Freddie and Fannie swap guidelines, creative solutions to solve problems. Understanding IBR. Your student loan payments may be deferred or into forbearance. If your loans are deferred, you have no payment due. When you begin to make payments on your student loans, you may have several options. You may be making payments on your student loan based on your income. This is called income-based repayment, or IBR for short. IBR plans typically will not cover the principal and interest due, and the loan balance may increase even though you are making payments. If your payment is based on a calculation that pays off your loan in full at the end of the loan term, this is an amortized payment. All underwriting guidelines will, with all lenders will allow you to use an amortized payment when calculating your debt to income ratio. IBR plans could also leave you with a zero payment, even though your loan is in repayment status. Your income is reviewed every year to determine your new payment over the next year. Student loan payment change history. More and more students are straddled with student loan debt for years after leaving school. Being chained to a student loan debt requires an experienced locksmith to unlock the correct guidelines to give you approved for your home loan. It's almost a full-time job keeping up with the updates to underwriting guidelines and IBR payments seem to send many loan officers and tailspin of misinformation. Student loan guideline changes since 2015. Twice for Fannie Mae conventional loans, twice for Freddie Mac conventional loans, one time for FHA insured loans, two times for VA guaranteed loans, one time for USDA guaranteed loans. The first major change to underwriting guidelines happened when lenders were no longer allowed to ignore deferred payments or loans in forbearance. The second major change was that you had to apply a payment to any student loan balance. If the payment reporting on your credit report will not pay off the loan at the end of the fixed term, your payments are not amortized. Non-amortized payments became public enemy number one by Fannie Mae, FHA, and USDA. In 2015, Freddie Mac guidelines did not allow for deferred payments or loans and forbearance and would allow IBR payments even if the reported payment is zero. Tomorrow, I will go over calculating your debt to income ratio, DTI, and student loan guidelines. As always, you can reach out to me at www.talkwithmarkloyd.com, 207-478-2065. Thank you.